did I go and do cops in the front? Who sent me a message? Oh, I don't know. and welcome back to the channel this is the finale episode of diy queen but if you're just seeing me for the first time hi my name is priscilla i'm an nigerian women to designer based in the uk and in this video i'm going to be sharing the process of creating a very fabulous gown for a gala i got invited to my first gala ever and i have 25 pounds to make a gown i don't know the kind of magic i'm about to perform but i hope you watch this video to the end to see how this gown comes to life i'm off to the shop today to get some fabric i'm going to grab my cash on the way grab my fabric and then head on with creating the gown where are you going to find this fabric i am going to try and source this fabric from mp silks it is a fabric warehouse i think it's in north of london i've never been there but it's similar to Woolcrest. And the good thing about that place is they sell the fabric in 10 meter rolls, so which is wholesale price. And because of the size of this gown, I'm hoping I can get a lot of fabric for, for the kind of budget that I have. La, la, ya, la, ya, la, ya, la, la, la. Well, that was an epic fail. Uh, I arrived at MP Silks and they were just shutting. So I'm going to head off to Walton Stone Market and hopefully I can find something that works there. George is behind me. Epic fail. <laughs> Literal epic fail. So let's head off to Walton Stone Market now. Thankfully, Waltham Stone Market is not too far from MP Silks. They are sort of around that like northern side of London and it was a train ride away. I arrived at the market and it is one of those markets that has shop after shop after shop. And you just have to be patient enough to go into the different shops to find what you are looking for. And then sometimes they might be open to bargaining the price. It depends on the owner. This is one of those markets that I definitely came to a lot when I was in fashion school because it was a good location from where I used to stay. Now for this gown, I knew I wanted something that had a little bit of shimmer but was on the lighter side of things. I went to a few shops before I found one towards the end of the market that is called Star Fabrics. This is where I found what I liked. Are you sure 25 pounds is enough for such a big gown? No. <laughs> no. I don't know how I'm going to make it work. I honestly don't think it'll be enough. I think I might end up ad adding like an additional 10 to 15 pounds realistically. The kind of fabric that I know I want to use for this gown, it would be almost impossible to find that fabric for less than four pounds a meter. And I would need like what, five, six, seven meters. So I'm not very confident it will be enough. I will try to keep my spend really low, but honestly, I can't make any promises at this point. Yeah, I thought I was looking at those. <laughs> yeah, I like these. I mean, check out that purple. And even, and even this one is nice as well. This one is beautiful. I honestly think I'll keep seeing this one in that one. I feel like I haven't done anything in this color or even this color. But I think I've done something bronzy, so I don't want to do that again. I like the purple. Yeah, I think the purple one. How much do you need? I need a lot. Except I'll change the style of the dress, but I need a lot. Not how many meters? I need a lot. How many? Like 10. 10? Give 50 pounds to me. I only have 25 pounds. How much fabric can I get for 20 pounds? Let's let's yeah. do let's do math. Because yeah. I need to make a big gown. Yeah. And I, it's a challenge of 25 pounds. It's so enough. Listen now. So I'm, I'm this worker. Don't <laughs> is this, this argue with me now. Please. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you. I'm just yeah, very I'm care. just very stressed. <laughs> Can we find lining? That would be oh, he found it. Yeah. Oh nice. 
I had to get up because yeah. I can see you pass. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so 10, much. 10, 10. Uh, Thank you. No, it's not 10. Okay, I beg no, please. The 8, we'll do the 8 meters. I don't even know how I'm getting into this time before to this down and go. We'll have to make it work. I decided to get 9 meters of the purple taffeta and 2 meters of the lining and all together it came up to about 34 pounds and 50 pence and in retrospect it's actually not a lot of money that I spent for the fabrics to create this style of gown that I ended up creating so I think it was actually worth it. That was my budget in the wind, quite literally in the wind and then I was spending 34 pounds. Uh. 34 pounds I guess yeah, this gown better be the best gown it's ever been in his entire life <clears throat> well I'm sure you will look like a queen I still haven't bought the zip you know and there's still a zip and there's still exactly I still need to buy a zip except if I rummage through my supply at home I want to try and you know keep my spend low but not cut them short of their profit because they need to be able to take care of their family so I want to try and find like a happy medium. I'm going to work on creating the sewing patterns for this gown and these are the measurements that I worked with. I wrote them down and I'm going to start off with the front plan and from that front I'll create the back and all the other necessary parts of the garment. I've drawn a long vertical line that is going to become my center front and along the top edge of the line I'm going to be drawing in my neckline and then from there i'm going to be marking 2.5 inches downwards that is going to become my bust line from that point i'm going to be marking the vertical distance from my bust to my waist and then from my waist to my hip and then how long i want the bodice or the top half of the gown to be i think mine was about 20 or 21 inches so it was a dropped waistline that's like the silhouette of the gown those points i went in and squared them across so they had these like horizontal lines going through and along the top line which is the neckline i'm marking half of my across the chest measurement along the bust line i'm marking a quarter of my bust measurement plus half an inch ease and along the waistline i'm marking a quarter of my waist measurement plus 1.5 inches for the waist dart and ease in the Along the hip, I'm marking a quarter of my hip measurement plus half an inch ease. And along the hemline, I just added about half an inch to whatever that hip dimension was. So it was like a comfortable fit that I could sit and move around in. These points I'm connecting together to make the side seam of the body. So I'm connecting the bust to the waist, the waist to the hip and down to the hemline of the bodice. And I'm going to draw in these points connecting the bust line to the neckline. Along the bust line, I'm going to be marking half of my nipple to nipple measurement and along that point, I'm going to draw a vertical line that cuts through. That way, I'm going to be dividing this plan into two at this point. And along that line, I'm going to be marking away the waist dart of one inch, so half an inch on both sides. And then I'm going to be coming to the neckline and I'm going to be marking about one inch or 0.75 inches on both sides of that vertical line. And when I connect those points together, I'm able to shape in the bodice. So I'm connecting the bust points to the waist dart for the left and the right hand side. And from drawing in those lines, I'll be able to create panels that I can trace off, add seam allowance to create the front patterns. When do you plan to wear this gown? So I have my uh, BVF graduation next week, which is like the Black Voices Fund and I'm one of the recipients for 2022 class. My graduation is next week and the dress code is uh, black tie. It's meant to be a gala. I don't know how over the top people are going to go. So I just, I would rather go there overdressed than underdressed. I think that's what I'm trying to ensure because I'm a fashion designer and everybody will expect me to like turn up looking good. So that's where I plan to wear this gown to. I'm going to come to the neckline and mark 0.75 inches downwards and half an inch inwards. These points I'm going to connect together to help me make the shape for the neckline. I'm going to connect that 0.5 inch point back onto the neckline. And then for the cup itself, I am marking 3 inches below the nipple point like so. And then 3 inches sideways. Those points I'm going to connect together to draw in the side shape of the cup. 
and then for the other side that goes towards the center front i just drew this by hand because i tried to make it work with my pattern master but wasn't giving me the shape that i liked so i wanted the cup to kind of go from the dart area up until the half an inch point and once i had the dart or dash lines marked i am connecting them together using my pattern master i'm also going to draw in this edge side of the cup and i'm just going in to reshape the edge of the neckline towards the side so it's like a smooth curve that just connects nicely now i'm going to divide this cup into three panels and the top panel is two inches wide so from the neckline down to this point that i'm marking i'm going to connect this together and then that makes the top of the cup and then the two sides are the both sides of the dart now i'm going to trace off the three panels i'm going to join together to make the boss cup and the top panel i'm actually going to be folding in these neckline dart because i don't want that in there for my top panel so i'm going to trace along the front edge the side the bottom and add a seam allowance of about one centimeter all around this pattern my annotation and notch points and then i'm going to repeat the same thing for the two sides so one side is this side towards the bottom and the other side is the side towards the top and i trace them off in such a way that i did not include the waist dart in there so when i connect everything together it sits around my bust in a nice way off camera i went ahead to trace off the mid front panel and then the side front panels i added the green line annotations and cut out the pattern pieces and the mid front panel which is what would be cut on a fold is going to connect to the side panel and those i will need to cut with the main fabric and the lining as well for the back, I'm just going to drop the back neckline to this point like so. I would say it's about 2 inches below the bust line. It curves down from the arm curve and down to the center back. And then I'm shaping in the waistline by about half an inch along the center back. So I don't have a very massive zip bulge when I attach my zip on the center back of the gown. This I'm going to be curving back onto the straight top and bottom edges of the gown i'm also going in here to just shape in the dart so it's more straight along the top edges because the back is essentially going to be a drop neckline compared to the front i went ahead to trace off those back patterns and added a seam allowance around it of one centimeter or roughly half an inch added my grain line my notches and annotations as well for the back i'll need to cut a pair once to go on one side and the other to go on the other side and i use the same pattern to essentially cut my lining pieces as well so these are all of the pattern pieces i actually made for this gown and it didn't take me too long to create because i made them from scratch you could also make from your make the pattern from your basic bodice pattern if you have one you could also check out the pdf pattern on the kim dave store which i'm going to be linking down below if you want to save some time on creating your patterns okay i am done making the pattern for just the bodice area my plan is to cut the skirt as like one big sheet and just gather it into the bottom of the bodice and then for that piece that kind of like is like a flower petal that i'm going to cut as a shape that sits into here and then i want the part around the center front to be a little bit shorter and then it goes high and then it comes back short so it's kind of like it's like a flower around that area <laughs> why am i doing this so it's kind of like a flower around that area i think that's how i'm going to cut those pieces for the front i will cut that straight onto the fabric i'll let you know the dimensions as i work but um i think my only concern in the pattern is how i've made the cup the last time i made a cup pattern like this it didn't really sit right so i'm hoping i've done it correctly this time and even if it's not perfect at least i'm able to still wear it and i feel comfortable and confident because i think it will show if you make a garment and you don't feel comfortable in it it definitely shows especially because it's going to be forced for such an event where people will be taking pictures there'll be a lot of like you know people around so i want to feel good aside from just looking good that's something i'm really hoping i can achieve with this gown but so far so good um let's go let's go <laughs> so far so good let's get into cutting all the pieces of the gown out
with the patterns all placed against the fabric i'm going to go ahead to cut the top half of the gown i'm also going to be cutting the roughly bit that looks like this this i ended up cutting two pairs off a pair for each side one thing i will say when you work with taffeta is the fabric is actually quite lightweight so if you can afford I would say I own some kind of interfacing to just give the fabric some body and some structure. I didn't have a lot of interfacing in the studio so I just went ahead to fuse the ruffle piece that really stood on the front of the dress and then the skirt I cut as 35 inches but on a fold and I cut two sets of the skirt piece because I want to have a slit on the front. For the skirt width, I'll say let it be at least twice of your hip measurement so you can gather that back in. As I was mentioning earlier on, please add some interfacing if you're working with a thin fabric. I added interfacing to my ruffle piece and to my cut pieces. And then for the bust pads, I just harvested them from like an old bra that I had and I actually reshaped it so it sits nicely into the size of the cups that I have cut for the fabric now i've cut all of the the top the bottom the lining i've cut all of the pieces i'm actually going to get into sewing straight away the first thing i'm going to be joining together is the cups and it's a three-piece situation so i'm going to join the bottom panels together and then connect the bottom panels to the top and i'm going to go ahead to iron all of the seams open in such a way that it makes like a rounded shape and rather than having it flat so it sits in such a way that my boobs are not totally squished on my body the next i'm going to do is i'm going to join the bodice panels together so the front and the back pieces i've just pinned and i've stitched together i've also ironed the seams open so everything just lays nice and smoothly I'm also going to add a set of the cups because you know we have two sets. One set is going to go on the main top front and then the other set is going to go on the lining. Stitching the cups into the front of the bodice was actually quite tricky. So if you're going to recreate this style, don't rush it. Just take your time and it would be worth it, I promise you. Guys, uh, this dress is not... I think I'm, I'm not quite... Is, I'm not getting it the way I want to get it and let me show you what I mean so I just finished stitching in the 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 bust cups for the front so like the three-piece situation and from far it doesn't look too bad but when you come close you can clearly tell that the cups are a little bit too narrow I should have shaped it more to the side so my boobs sit properly into it for now I've just pinned these um, half cups inside this i got from like an old bra that i was going to throw away so i just harvested the boss pads and i'm going to put it inside the dress i don't know i'm not sure the thing is i wish i had the time out i've started this this dress again just i need it for next week and this weekend is already so packed oh am i the only one that has these moments of like Oh, okay, let's just okay. Let's continue. Let's continue Pray for me guys. Let's continue For the ruffle piece I have pinned right sides together and I'm going to sew up the side and the top curved edges Leaving the bottom open this I turned inside out and I've pressed nice and neatly and this is what it looks like I'm going to be sewing along the bottom edge with the longest stitch on my machine to create gathers along this piece. If you have a gathering foot, you can use that as well. That would save you some time. I'm just pulling the threads to gather in this bottom curved edge and I repeated the same thing on the other side. This I'm going to take to the neckline of my bodice or the top half of my gown and I'm going to be pinning it in such a way that it starts from around the center front edge and it goes to the side seam. So this I will be pinning in such a way that the smooth or the finished edge is pointing down and the raw edge is along the neckline. This I will just stitch real quick before I add the shoulder straps. The shoulder straps are actually optional. I just decided to add them to give me more support in the day. I knew I was going to be dancing, moving around. So just adding the shoulder strap is going to keep the dress up and secure when you have it on. This I added one around the front, sort of like where the nipple um, seam is and a pair along the back. I just pinned them down for now and I'm going to work on the lining. 
the lining is essentially going to follow the same steps as i did for the front i'm going to be joining up all of the panels so i have one piece and then i'm going to be setting the cups into the front of the lining pieces and then once that is all stitched and pressed i'm actually going to be adding boning tunnels to the lining rather than the main bodice because i don't want to have to see those seams on the main bodice this i have this like black tape in the studio and i've pinned that along the seams of the lining and i've stitched into such a way that i have boning tunnels that i'm going to pass this this normal plastic boning through i decided to add boning just to add a really nice and beautiful structure to the gown and i didn't have to buy this i already had this in the studio which was actually quite nice so I'm going to go ahead and use the lining to finish the gown along the neckline once all of the boning has been passed into the tunnels. Now I'm going to put right sides together of the lining against the gown. I remember the gown already has the straps and the ruffle piece already pinned in place. So with one continuous stitch, I'm going to be connecting the lining and the main bodice or the outer piece along the neckline. That way I'm able to finish the neckline of the gown, join the lining and then add the straps in as well. After doing this, I just turned everything inside out, gave it a nice press. You have the option of going in to do what I call a safety stitch, which is essentially when you sew the seam allowance against the lining on the wrong side of the garment. That just ensures that things are tucked in. So when you have the gown or your garment on, the lining is not folding over as you have the piece with time. It's time to add the skirt and because I cut the hemline of the skirt on a fold, I'm essentially just going to sew up the sides, turn it inside out, iron it down and then sew with the longest stitch along the top edge to create gathers. Now there are two sets of the skirt piece here. One set is slightly longer than the other set because it has a slit sort of like three quarter ways through the seam. So it has like a split on the side. I think it was on my left leg if I remember correctly. So that way you're able to, you know, have the nice gather detail and you have a split showing through. I went ahead to overlock the waist seam, the center back, and I'm going to go in to actually add this zip. Now this zip is not the right shade, but I think I, I got away with it because it was like a nice lavender light purple color. This I stitched on the top half of the dress and then I went ahead to finish the bottom half to complete the gown. This is what it looks like all done. Oh my gosh, the number of compliments I got in this gown was actually insane. My mom could never believe that I made this gown in her words. It looks like it was ready made. If you're a Nigerian, you know what that means. And I just felt so beautiful. I felt really proud of myself. Even though I was having a meltdown halfway through making this gown that I wouldn't like how it turned out. It came out so, so unique, I would say. And I felt very comfortable. Like I was able to really dance, sit eat, talk, mingle without feeling like I had like a super tight gown on and I'm so proud of how it actually turned out. How do you feel about the about this being the final episode of the DIY Queen and you going to a final gala. I know, that actually wasn't planned, you know. I think all of the forces in the universe just aligned for this final design. It was actually meant to be something slightly different, but it ended up morphing into this shape and this style. I don't know, I think it was just meant to be. Um, this, this was meant to be the style, that was meant to be the fabric. And I'm, I feel so blessed and it has been a very insightful journey for me like understanding fabrics finding out clever ways to use them to still create something really beautiful without spending a lot of money i will make a season two if the people want season two i will make a season two maybe switch things up a bit a different type of garments i don't know jackets trousers we'll see but yeah feel blessed thank you guys so much for following me on this journey this was a project that I kind of started as my graduation um, project for the BVF class. 
but ended up spanning into five episodes and the love has been real it's one of those projects that i know i will not get lots of views and lots of like comments but the engagement and the connection has definitely grown stronger with my kdiva so thank you for watching all five episodes um, i hope you guys enjoyed it so far i enjoyed it honestly myself i think through this project i fell in love with creating again which is something i had forgotten at some point this year in 2022 so i found myself enjoying like the process of choosing the fabrics coming up with new designs finding clever ways to substitute like different aspects of the different gowns that i made so i i, I have really enjoyed this um, i'm curious to know which episode has been your favorite one let me know in the comment section down below and in season two what should we do should we do jackets should we do pants should we do suit sets i don't know just let me know and we might make it happen in the new year thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye la, la, yeah. Só deixou as roupas.